It's time for What's New, the show that features the latest developments in the software industry that are driving innovation today. What's New is on the air right now. Hi, I'm Bruce Kyle. I'm an architect evangelist with Microsoft, and I'm here with Patty Falls, who is the CTO of Never Fail Software. Patty, tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Never Fail Software business, and we're all about zero business downtime. That means that, you know, for companies running SharePoint, Exchange, SQL, anything can fail. Hardware can fail, software applications can fail, networks can fail, and we will keep the end users running. So that means the end users We'll just see what appears like a slowdown, but actually what's happening is Neverfield Software's taking that whole environment and, and bringing it back up on a second server. Cool, so what is the emerging technologies that are most interesting to you from Microsoft? Well, the one that we're most excited about is Hyper-V. You know, it's in, it's, it's in the product today, and, and why is it important? It's important because it allows people to not be restricted to, to put all of their mission-critical applications that we're supporting on secondary servers on physical servers. It means they can put them on virtual machines with Hyper-V. So, uh, what's the customer benefit for that? Why, why, why does that matter to well, your customers? Well, virtualization is key to availability because in a world where you have to have one physical server to protect every other physical server in your data center, the cost of deploying that is, is vast. Uh, what virtual machines allow you to do is deploy all those uh, secondary servers on a second host or a number of second hosts so that you can really keep the cost of deployment of very uh, high availability of disaster recovery to a minimum. So you started working with this Microsoft technology. Why, uh, uh, what, what have you encountered? What kind of issues have you encountered? And what kinds of, uh, yeah, what kinds of issues have you encountered? Well, the, 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 the amazing thing about Hyper-V in its first release of Windows Server uh, 08 is that this product's ready for real time. You know, a lot of people think about first versions not being ready for real time, but this one is. You know, we recommend it to our customers to support their mission critical applications, be that SharePoint, be that Exchange, be that SQL, whatever's running on those primary servers. We know from all of our testing, uh, all of our load scalability, uh, execution on it that Hyper-V supports all those those platforms and does it really well. So how does R2 help your clients? Well R2 just brings Hyper-V to that next level. Starts adding things like live migration which it really starts rounding out the product and of course with the next version of VMM, System Center VMM, they, then the management capabilities around it get even stronger as well. So if there was an ISV who was interested in using this technology, what would you tell them about how to get started or uh, how, how you, some lessons that you learned about how, how to implement that in your... Well, in your one of the great things we found was when our engineers started working with the very early versions of Hyper-V, that they auto automatically started using it themselves on their own machines for, as their test environment, uh, as the environment that they built everything around. So that was how confident they were with it. And what I'd be saying to anybody else who's in that position, go and start deploying, use Hyper-V today in your products, tie it into your products uh, as the virtualization solution. So what are you looking forward to next? Well, the thing that's getting me really excited is how virtualization is really the enabler for cloud computing. You know, uh, for some of us of our generations, you know, we, we knew about Moore's Law and, you know, every 18 months double the processor capacity. The problem we've had is that actually servers haven't been able to use all of that processor capacity because if you're restricted to a single physical server, you did, and for your exchange, you have to put tens of thousands of users on, on that thing to actually start getting above 20% of the processor capacity. With virtualization, you can start exploiting all that processing power by having 10 and, and fairly soon hundreds of virtual machines on a single physical host and you can start therefore making use of all that spare capacity uh, on your processing side. Cool. Uh, thanks for coming today, Patty. I appreciate the time you had. We'll see you next time. Okay, that's good. Thank you.